The surest way to win in the college game is actually quite simple. Running the damn football. If your team has the edge and talent, there's often no need for elaborate schemes with cute nicknames. These next 10 teams could run the ball down your throat with the starter, backup, third stringer, hell, even their water boys probably could have picked up a Pro Bowl in the NFL. Now that's what I call a quality tool. The most insane backfields in college football history are coming up right after this. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Look, during these weird times, you gotta keep your boys in shape and properly groomed. But on top of that, you gotta package them correctly. That's why Manscaped created the Perfect Package 3.0, which includes the new Lawnmower 3.0, water-resistant body trimmer made with advanced skin-safe technology. This kit has everything. Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Toning Spray, and my favorite, the custom Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Look, if you're gonna venture out into the world, you want to present to whoever that lucky person is properly. And these bad boys keep things cool with crop cooling technology and is made from super soft contour flex technology that promotes breathability and repels that nasty moisture. All of this works in tandem with the products I just mentioned for an optimal comfort experience. Purchase them all together at manscaped.com and opt for the peak hygiene plan and get new boxers delivered to your door every replenishment cycle. Like I said, go to manscaped.com, five dash points, and get the perfect package 3.0 for 20% off, free shipping, and two free gifts. Manscaped.com, your balls will thank you. Somehow, the guy who broke the single season touchdown record in college ended up having the worst pro career of all three of these Badgers. Melvin Gordon has made a pair of Pro Bowls in his career, and James White should have been the MVP of Super Bowl 51, scoring three touchdowns, including the game winner, in overtime. In 2012, these three combined for over 3,200 yards on the ground and 39 total touchdowns. Gordon himself averaged 11 yards per touch. If their quarterback was anyone other than this guy, they probably win the natty with no problem. Two first round picks and a second rounder all splitting carries for the Bulldogs in 2014. Todd Gurley was the star and ended up becoming the 10th pick by the Rams in 2015, but it was Nick Chubb that led the team with a massive 1,547 yards on just 219 carries, over seven yards per tote. Both Gurley and Chubb managed to average that much a pop and the freshman Sony Michelle was good for over six yards a carry himself. Talk about efficiency. Gurley has gone on to become a two time All-Pro and the 2017 Offensive Player of the Year. Nick Chubb earned a Pro Bowl in his second season in the NFL and Sony Michelle scored a total of six touchdowns in the 2018 playoffs, including the dagger in Super Bowl 53. The combination of Gurley, Chubb, and Michelle sounds like a transgender coming of age novel in a lot of ways, but it was also the best backfield in Georgia's history. One Heisman, a Rookie of the Year, and the man that pulled off the Miami Miracle? All rolling for the Crimson Tide at the same time. Sure, Alvin Kamara never actually played it down for that Bama squad, but imagine having too much depth that you can't get Alvin freaking Kamara on the field. But his presence is counted nonetheless. You can make the case that Henry, Yeldon, Drake, and Kamara could be rivaled by another Alabama backfield made up of Mark Ingram, Trent Richardson, and Eddie Lacy. But given that watching Trent Richardson in the NFL was like watching a bird fly into a window over and over again, the edge goes to the younger group. Plus, they could also manage their calories. And even their fullback, Jalston Fowler, scored three touchdowns in the NFL over three seasons with the Tennessee Titans. Damn you, Nick Saban. The backfield known as the Pony Express may not have been legal, but it was damn sure fun. The co-champion SMU Mustangs dropped an 11-0-1 record in 1982, largely in part of the rushing duo of one future Hall of Famer, 
Eric Dickerson, who put up 1,600 yards and 17 touchdowns with his upright running style. And 1985 Pro Bowler Craig James, who added a nearly another 1,000 yards on the ground. The Mustangs offense was straightforward, but the way they got those two backs was not. SMU used a slush fund to illegally pay players or entice them with gifts like Eric Dickerson's new car. Dickerson drove the Stangs to the title of co-champs, and the NCAA eventually gave SMU the death penalty for their illicit recruitment methods. No football for two years and they never recover or see another backfield half as talented as Dickerson and James. It'll be rare to see another running back go top five in the draft the way the NFL is trending. To have two running backs from the same college backfield go top five in the same draft, pretty much unthinkable, but that's what happened to Auburn teammates Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams in the 2005 draft. To get them both drafted that high, it took just 2,000 combined rushing yards and 22 touchdowns from the pair, leading Auburn to a 13-0 record in 2004. Williams actually had more yards and touchdowns than Brown, but it was the more powerful Ronnie that got drafted higher. Although Williams won Offensive Rookie of the Year, neither of the two lived up to their draft status in the NFL, mostly due to injuries, but to land two players from the same position in the top five is an achievement nonetheless. Of course, they were both drafted ahead of Aaron Rodgers. The back that had the most 1,000 yard seasons in the NFL, the guy we haven't talked about, Brandon Jacobs, who helped the Giants to a pair of rings trucking a lot of defensive backs along the way. Smash and dash, thunder and lightning, shake and cake, whatever euphemism you want to call Reggie Bush fast and Lindell White thick, those two were a nearly unstoppable duo in 2005. I say nearly because, well, you know why. Reggie Bush rushed for 1,740 yards on an unreal 8.7 yards per carry, while Lindell White chipped in a bonus 1,300 yards to push them over 3,000 on the ground as a duo. Bush took home the Heisman for a while at least and was the consensus number one one pick in a draft before the Texans threw a curveball and opted to take Mario Williams. That might have been the smart choice because as electrifying as Bush was at times in the NFL, he didn't actually record more than 600 yards in a season until 2010 with the Miami Dolphin when he broke the 1,000 yard barrier for the only time in his career. We can probably forget about his 12 carry minus nine yard season with the Bills. White had his own 1,000 yard season with the Titans in 2007 but could never keep his his weight down and only lasted four years in the league. But that 2005 season at Southern Cal, no piece of cake for defenses. This backfield might not get the top spot on the list, but it's the only one on our tally to feature three, count them, three Hall of Famers, provided the last one gets in. The 66 Orange were powered by the elusive Floyd Little, the ever-powerful Larry Zonka, and the elite punctuality of future Jags and Giants head coach Tom Coughlin. Little earned a trip to the Hall despite playing behind a garbage offensive line in Denver, while Larry Zonka got his as a key cog in the 72 and 73 Super Bowl champion Dolphins machine. Coughlin got his two rings as a head coach, but never actually laced up the cleats in the NFL, despite a nice season in 67 when he caught 60 passes out of the backfield. Jeez, did he ever look young? Three orange men with three gold jackets. Imagine having to craft a game plan to stop two future pro Hall of Famers. That was the task for Oklahoma State's Big 8 opponents, and no one did a particularly good job of it. In 1987, Thurman Thomas put up 1,600 yards on the ground while his backup Barry Sanders contributed another 600. That was good enough for a 10-2 record and a thrilling Sun Bowl victory over West Virginia in which Thomas put up 157 yards and four rushing touchdowns. You know who was handing the ball to Thomas and Sanders? A 40-year-old man named Mike Gundy. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Well, he was like 20 at the time. Thomas helped the Bills to four straight Super Bowl appearances with and without a helmet, and Barry became perhaps the best ever to do it, surpassing rushing 2,000 yards just a season before he called it quits. It almost feels like a waste of having two of the best to ever do it on the same team, just not enough carries in a game for both of them.
These three future pros with three distinct styles put the back in Razorbacks, combining for 3,339 yards on the ground and a grand total of 35 touchdowns. And that's not counting Darren McFadden's four passing touchdowns. Yes, he actually threw seven total TDs in his college career. McFadden became the fourth overall pick of the draft. Jones, who averaged 8.7 yards per carry in 2007, went 22nd overall. And Peyton Hillis, a powerful seventh rounder drafted as a fullback, ended up on the cover of Madden as a tailback. Somehow this Arkansas team only went eight and five with all that talent behind the quarterback, leading to the resignation of Houston Nutt and the cursed hire of the cowardly Bobby Petrino and his breakneck coaching philosophy. And now for our number one most insane college football backfield. Out of all the college backfields in history, the 2001 Canes filled the laundry basket with insane amounts of production. This squad has combined for a grand total of 35,668 rushing yards, 265 touchdowns, and nine Pro Bowls in the NFL. Clinton Portis was the lead back with 1,200 yards in 2001, but everyone contributed. Frank Gore averaged 9.1 yards per carry as a freshman, and the five of them combined for 26 touchdowns as a unit. That season, Miami won a natty and ended up going 12-0. All five went to the NFL, including Jared Payton, the son of the late great Walter Payton. Of course, this team wasn't just great because of their running backs. It was a legitimate NFL roster. Players like Ed Reed, Philip Buchanan, Antrell Roll, Jonathan Vilma, Vince Wolferk, Andre Johnson, Jeremy Shockey, Kellen Winslow Jr., and Brian McKinney. If there was ever a college team to beat the Browns, this may have been the one, but as strong as their roster was, the greatest strength of all was their backfield. How freaking crazy is that? Probably as crazy as Najee Davenport. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, hit that like button, and comment below if there's a backfield I might have missed. And also check out our sponsor, manscaped.com, from the link below. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.